so I will try to be very judicious with my five minutes. Um, the talk that Art advertised was my talk um, that he gave last year. I was interested in that, and uh, it's at three. Um, I'm going to try to distill a series of friends and conversations I had, mostly in the basement of the biology department building at Boston University with Les Hoffman in between while he's teaching his uh, field class. So it's going to resemble slightly um, things on a blackboard. Um, and um, so the, the title, let's start with the title. The title is Succession Theory and What's Next for Outplanting. So I'm going to try to build up a little bit of a picture of why we're talking about succession theory. And I'm going to start with sort of this conceptual diagram that's where a lot of the mathy approaches to ecology came from. So um, Art was able to get, there we go. Um, really, they started with the assumption that, that the natural world around us is at equilibria, or are returning to equilibria, or are progressing towards equilibria, like a healthy reef where there's lots of coral cover. Um, and of course, um, many of us have gone out and observed the world changing and that um, natural systems have never really been at equilibrium, and they're especially not at equilibrium now in the Anthropocene. Um, and so the next most simple thing is, okay, well, there, there's not just one equilibrium, but there's, but there's two. And this is the origin of alternative stable states um, or multiple stable states thinking. And um, it's been used as a conceptual tool for thinking about restoration. So you, you say, okay, well, it's not necessarily one, you know, one equilibrium point, but maybe the reef could exist in a healthy state or in a um, degraded state, two alternative stable states. And in that conceptualization, our intervention is really the attempt to push it back up over the hill. There's some, there's some forces keeping it in that degraded state. If we put in enough effort, we can push it back over the hump. We have, in fact, been successfully pushing systems back over the hump as um, the videos Art showed, for example. Um, and then to some point where this important but often nebulous idea of resilience comes in. So we, we need to take some restorative action to get it to the top of the hill, and then um, resilience um, takes over. Um, right, but um, I started out showing percent stony coral cover at the bottom, and this, you know, um, was unpacked a lot better by several of the other talks. Just coral cover isn't necessarily a resilient system, right? There's other dimensions of resilience besides just how much coral cover is there. You need a certain amount of coral cover for broadcast spawning to be viable and things like that, but there's a lot of different dimensions, many of them tied up in diversity. Um, so, you know, in, in some sense you can say, well, restoration is complete when we get the system far enough that natural resilience takes over, um, but um, but you know there's a lot to that, and and even if our restoration is targeted, is focused on um, restoring an ecosystem service or something like that, it's we still want it to be a resilient solution. Otherwise, we would just go build a seawall. And so, no matter what the target is, we have to think about the other dimensions, we have to think about the biodiversity when we're thinking about is restoration complete um, as long as resilient ecosystem services are what we're hoping for. At the same time, um, right, the goalposts are shifting and, um, you know, the stresses of the Anthropocene on reefs have eroded their resilience. Um, and, and really, um, you know, the present and certainly the future in a lot of places looks more like this in this simple diagram, right? Um, and this is, you know, what we need to, what we need to be facing. What is the goal of restoration when the resilient state isn't currently viable and won't be viable for 10 years or 20 years or 30 years or 100 years? Um, even more frightening, right? slight alteration to this line, but the, you know, the worst case scenario for all of us, our nightmare scenario is that, right, not only is there no high coral state 
that's viable, but actually the only viable state for coral is at 0% coral cover. Um, restoration during the coral reef hiatus may not really be restoration in that sense of getting us back to a place. It's more of just keeping us from getting to the bottom, right? And so uh, when is restoration complete? Well, as long as we're in this hiatus, it may never be complete, and we may need to keep rolling the ball back up the hill. Um, and that may be okay. Um, our human determination can be a source of resilience for these systems if we're willing to go out there and keep pushing and, and keep, keep injecting something into these systems. And of course, human ingenuity may also, may also do that. So I know building walls is a very sore subject here in Florida, um, but you see across the, the, the um, community we have, there's, there's enormous amounts of creativity um, to, to think about artificial resilience um, beyond just stubbornness. Um, so really what we're working on is, um, is trying to learn more about the full landscape um, and we're doing that from, from the data. So if you want to learn about that, um, you can come to my long talk.